Chapter 6, Section 6.1, Series Solutions to Differential Equations. Let's start off by defining a power series. A power series in x equals or x minus a is an infinite series of the form the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of c sub n times x minus a to the nth power. And here's an example of the sine function that's uh, in black and a couple of Taylor polynomial or some power series. The first order, uh, the third order is in red and the fifth order is in blue. The definition of convergent and divergent. A power series is convergent at a specified value of x if its sequence of partial sums converges. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at the sequence of partial sums and take the limit as n goes to infinity. This is not really the best way to uh, see convergence but this is a definition of convergence. And if it's not convergent then it is divergent. So the animation that you're seeing here is the exponential function and the exponential function has a series that converges to every single point. And so although it stops over here at around 2.5, um, this is actually just taken up to the fifth degree polynomial. But if we went farther and farther, you would see that um, the series will eventually converge to that graph. Interval of convergence in the center. So every power series has an interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is a set of numbers for which the series will converge. And the center of the interval of convergence is going to be x minus a. So in this particular case, the center is going to be at 0. And then the interval of convergence for this particular um, function, it will extend up to 1. And now, to be specific about the interval of convergence, we have to actually find out what happens at the endpoints. And so, in this particular example, this black graph over here that's hard to see is actually um, 1 over 1 minus x. That's the geometric series. And then uh, we have a few of the power series around 0. Notice that this thing has a discontinuity at 1, and so it actually will stop converging beyond negative one as well. And so uh, if you do check the endpoints, you'll see that neither of these endpoints would work out. And so the interval of convergence for this particular problem would just be from negative one to one, not including those endpoints. Uh, absolute convergence, when the interval converges in a power series, converges absolutely. Uh, in other words, if x is in an interval of convergence and it's not an endpoint, then the series absolutely converges. And absolute convergence means you take the absolute value and it will converge. Uh, there's one important test that we're going to need for this. There's a few other tests that you might have studied in, in the second semester calculus, but the one we'll need for this particular problem or for this particular class is the ratio test. So the ratio test says you make a ratio of the n plus first term divided by the nth term and then take the limit as n goes off to infinity. And then what will happen here is that you have an x minus a uh, that can be taken out because it's independent of n. You have uh, x minus a to the n would cancel and you have x minus a left. And then all you have left are the coefficients c sub n plus 1 divided by c sub n. Now you take the limit of that as it goes to L and then we have conditions. If L is less than 1 then the series will converge absolutely. If L is bigger than 1, it's going to diverge. Now those endpoints happen when L is equal to 1, and that's when we have to do a separate test. Here is a quick example of using the ratio test. We have an x to the n divided by n squared, and to do the ratio test, we're going to take the n plus first term divided by the nth term. Now you do the reciprocals, you take the x to the n, n plus 1 x to the n, and they cancel and leaves x to the first power. And then what you have left is, um, is uh, 1 over n 
plus 1 squared divided by n plus or n squared and then that's the reciprocal and then you have this uh, ratio and then you take the limit as n goes off to infinity and this limit here will just become 1 and so we have x times 1 or the absolute value of x and so we know from the ratio test that it's going to absolutely converge if x is less than if the absolute value of x is less than 1 so that goes between negative 1 and 1 it's going to have a radius of convergence of 1 and we need to check the endpoints so if we let x equal to 1 we have uh, 1 over n squared which is a p-series and converges absolutely and if it's a negative 1 then you have an alternating series it's also going to converge and so it looks like it'll converge for within negative 1 and 1 and also at the endpoints here's a new definition for us a function is analytic if um, if it can be represented as a power series in x minus a well I think a, a shorter a quicker version of that is to say that uh, a function is analytic if all the derivatives exist at that point here are a handful of important series that you need to know uh, you either have it memorized or you should have it memorized by the end of the semester and uh, some important Maclaurin series are the exponential function and that's uh, x to the n over n factorial n starts at zero um, this exponential series will converge for all real numbers x we have a cosine is an alternating series cosine is an even function so you'll see just even powers in your polynomial series and this thing also converges uh, for all real numbers sine is an odd function you'll see that it's uh, it'll have uh, odd powers and it also converges for all real numbers and then we have uh, another important series is the geometric series 1 over 1 minus x which is just x to the n and goes from 0 to infinity and in this particular case the series converges only between negative 1 and positive 1 and does not even converge at the endpoints okay so we should be able to um, to know these series and use these series as our base for uh, studying other series uh, we can also take a look at combining series by adding composition multiplying and then uh, we can combine series together by uh, looking at uh, changing the indices and that's this is going to be an important task for us as we work on our um, differential equations so some examples of uh, series uh, algebra and uh, first let's take a look at composition we have e to the x is our original series we can compose that and make a new series uh, let's say if we want e to the negative x we're gonna put negative x in for x and then this is our new series now it's an alternating series you can also have e to the x squared where we put x squared in for wherever we see an x and uh, you can simplify this to x to the 2n divided by n factorial uh, adding series let's do uh, uh, a proof of Euler's formula this is a formula that we used earlier on uh, when, we're, when we first studied uh, second order differential equations with the um, linear differential equations with constant coefficients let's put an i x where i is the imaginary number uh, and for the power of e and so that would be ix in here now let's take a look at a few terms let's say when n is equal to 0 n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 now let's go up to 7 uh, n is equal to 0 we just have 1 over 1 uh, n is equal to 1 we have 1 divided by 1 or that's uh, ix to the first power which is just going to be ix n is equal to 2 i squared is going to be po uh, negative 1 so that would be negative x squared because n is equal to 2 over 2 factorial n is equal to 3 would be negative i so here's your negative i and then x cubed over 3 factorial 
Uh, n is equal to 4. Uh, that'll bring your negative i times i. That's positive 1. And that's a positive 1. x to the 4th over 4 factorial. Uh, to the 5th, it'll be i and then uh, etc. So if you take a look at this uh, string of uh, terms, we can take a look at the terms that uh, don't have an i and put them together. And if that doesn't look familiar, uh, I'll remind you that this is a, an even function. It just look like the even values here highlighted. And uh, that's alternating. It uh, starts off with a positive, a negative, a positive, a negative, etc. So this looks a lot like the cosine function. All the terms with the i, uh, again, similarly are odd. And it's alternating, starting off with a positive x and a negative x cubed over 3 factorial and a positive x to the fifth over 5 factorial, etc. And so that's just uh, the sine and the cosine functions. So if we take a look at these as series, the i can factor out of the, all the blue terms. And then we have the sine times i times, uh, or cosine x plus i times the sine x. And that is Euler's formula. Uh, multiplication of series is a little bit uh, more difficult. Uh, let's take an example where we have e to the x times sine x. Let's expand out both of these series. And then the multiplication will just be uh, term by term multiplication. So 1 times this whole thing, x times this whole thing, x squared over 2 times this whole thing, and then x cubed over 3 factorial over this whole thing. And so if we get that stretched out like this, we can uh, try to multiply everything out. Multiplying the 1 out, multiplying the x out, multiplying the x squared over 2 out, and then uh, I didn't bother with x cubed over 3 factorial and multiplied out. But uh, if we take a look at those and combine all the terms that are similar, and that's just essentially matching the powers. I have the first term x. Uh, this is the only x squared term. And uh, this is the only x cubed term. And then if I take a look at x to the fourth, I have x to the fourth over 3 factorial. And I didn't multiply this out, but this would have been another x to the fourth over 3 factorial. It looked like it would cancel because this one's a uh, negative, this one's a positive. And then I would look for x to the fifth and add that on. So um, if you can, it would be nice to get a, a closed form of this, but sometimes you're not going to be able to, and so you're just going to have to write the series out. And then we can go out as far as we need to, uh, depending on the accuracy that you need. Uh, the more important part of uh, series, working with series and differential equation, is being able to shift the indices. So let's take, for example, a couple of series, unknown series right now. We have an n times c to the c sub n x to the n plus n minus 1. And then our n starts with 1 to infinity. And then we, here we have n is equal to 0 to infinity c sub n. So the indices are not matching, and the powers are also not matching. So what we want to do is we want to maybe write out the first few terms to see if we can somehow match them up. So if I write out the first few terms, I have c is equal to n is equal to 1 here. So I have 1 times c sub 1, x to the 1 minus 1, so that's the 0 power. Uh, let's put 2 in here. We get 2 c sub 2, x to the 2 minus 1, so that's just x. And then we go on with that pattern for the first series. And then we check out the next series, c sub 0, c sub 1, x to the first, c sub 2, x squared. And then let's see if we can combine them. So it looks like the first terms in each of the series are constant. The second terms have this, the x power. So we can regroup that and put that back into the series where uh, we can start with c sub 1. Or we can start with n is equal to 1. Uh, so a, a good practice might be to change your n's into k's to say that you're shifting. Uh, so I know that this first series looks exactly the same except we changed the n and the k. But the second one, we actually did the shift of the, of the sequence. So if I want to start with k is equal to 1, or more importantly, I want x to the k minus 1 power. 
then I'll start with k is equal to 1 and my c sub k minus 1 is going to be my first term. So if you focus on the second series in the original problem and the second series here, that's where the change happens. So let's take a look at the series. We uh, The starting point was 0 and now the starting point is 1. And all my n's over here became a k minus 1. So that's going to be our general rule that if we add anything to the starting point of the index, we're going to subtract 1 or subtract as many from uh, the variables inside of the summation. Well, in any case, now that we have x to the k minus 1 matching powers of x, uh, and then we also have the matching index starts, then we can put that together into one summation. All right, let's do an example where we actually use that information. We are asked to use the Maclaurin series to find a power series solution to y prime plus y is equal to zero. Now, this should be familiar. This is uh, our first differential equation that we studied, and the answer should be e to the negative x. Let's see how we can use power series solutions for this. First, let's let y equal to some generic power series, c sub n, x to the n. And then uh, we have y here, so we need the derivative as well. So let's take the derivative. So we have uh, uh, the derivative of c sub n x to the n is going to be n is a constant, c sub n is a constant, and x to the n minus 1. And the indices changed. So now we're going to add them together. And the next couple of steps are the steps that we saw on the last screen over here where we're combining these two uh, series. So we take a look at the series, we uh, spread it all out, match the indices, and then put it together. And then here is our conclusion. Now this thing is supposed to be equal to zero according to our differential equation. And so when we set this equal to zero, what we're going to do is we're going to find relationships between all the c sub n's or c sub k's. So in this case this is going to be true when k is equal to 1. Uh, this is 1 times c sub 1 plus c sub 0 should equal to 0. So that's just a coefficient not looking at x to the 0 power. And so I have c sub 1 plus c sub 0 is equal to 0. That means c sub 1 is equal to negative c sub 0. Now when k is equal to 2, I'll have 2 c sub 2 plus c sub 2 minus 1, which is c sub 1, and that should also equal to 0. Now if I solve for c sub 2, I'm going to get c sub 2 is negative 1 half c sub 1. But then what's c sub 1 equal to? c sub 1 is equal to negative c sub 0, so eventually c sub 2 is equal to 1 half c sub 0. We'll do it again and get c sub 3 is equal to a negative, this is 1 sixth, but instead of saying 1 sixth, let's keep it separate to see if we can find a pattern. And we'll see that we start off with 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3 times 2. So it looks like it's the factorial going on here. And if we do that for 4 and 5 as well, we're going to see that that factorial is going to happen for us. And we have uh, c sub 4 is equal to 1 over 4 factorial times c sub 0. c sub 5 is negative 1 over 5, uh, 1 over 5 factorial. And so the idea is to develop a relationship and see what the c sub 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is and how it relates to c sub 0. And so we can say that in general, c sub k is equal to negative 1 to the kth power uh, divided by k factorial. So now that we know that, the solution must be equal to um, the sum of c sub k x to the k or c sub n x to the n. But c sub n or c sub k is equal to negative 1 to the nth power divided by n factorial times c sub 0. Well, c sub 0 is a constant with respect to n, so that just goes outside. And then if you look at this series, this is e to the negative x. 
and that's what we had hoped for. So uh, a lot of practice doing this and try to get comfortable with the shifting and, uh, and then you'll be okay with series.